Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Diva Like It Wena Inner Diva segment. In this uh, in this segment, I am discussing ADD and ADHD. In part one, uh, I started to to discuss uh, the cause of what causes ADHD, ADHD, and according to this book. And simple solutions to adult ADD. Um, ADD is highly genetic. It's not caused by um, having poor moral standards or being a, a, a or being a bad parent. That's not what causes it. It is a biological disorder or disease. And um, it says that in the book that. Uh, um, one or it since it's genetic, one or both parents could could have either had or have ADHD themselves or carry the gene. And I, in my case I think that was what happened because like I I said in, in the first part, I don't I do not believe either one of my parents were ADHD or uh A, or A D D. Okay, so getting back to this, it says, it asks a question. Can you think of anyone in your family who has the same problem paying attention that you do? Tracing your family history can increase your awareness of the genetic component of ADD. And then it also discusses, so that's a question that you can kind of ask, you can kind of go back in your family tree and and kind of think about it and it really did this question really did help me do some soul searching because it did uh, cause me to, to kind of think back to some things that that went on uh, in my family on both sides of my family with, with you know with different in, with different relatives I should say and some some of the things that that went on when I was growing up and I didn't quite understand why they were doing or acting or saying some of the things they were doing and saying and acting out. So it led me to believe that uh, I am not the only one with this. So uh, another biological cause is uh, what is going on in our brain. And basically, um, they have found, and this is through uh, research, that individuals with ADD, ADHD, bipolar, uh, those who, who suffer from uh, chronic depression or anxiety, schizophrenia, they have found that our brain work differently and um and, and and there are are differences in our brain structures so this is something that was was has been shown through research and it says here that individuals like myself who have uh, ADHD or ADD have less uh, dopamine in our brain and uh, it, it uh, the book also brings out that uh, medication such as stimulant can increase the level of dopamine in the brain um, and there are medications out there that are designed to do that and then also um, it it uh it also brings out a side point here about about your environment and how it can make your symptoms better or or worse. And sometimes uh, an individual with ADHD uh, sometimes we do have uh, have issues with you know with staying still with you know sitting and sitting still uh, or paying attention. So sometimes we might have to get up and move around a little bit in order to, you know, to, to re, 
focus ourselves and it's not necessarily you're not dissing somebody let's say you're sitting in a business meeting and you you have ADHD or ADD and you in your brain is you're not paying attention to what the person is saying so you might stand up and kind of walk around a little bit to kind of refocus yourself so it talks about environment and uh and and how uh uh uh, uh, changes in the environment can 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 help uh, alleviate or minimize uh, symptoms. So um, so basically, that was what the book had to say about the cause of ADD, and 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 learning that does help because um, uh, I have to admit that there are time there were times that I felt really bad for some of the decisions that I have made. Sometimes I've said something to somebody that was quite blunt and I didn't mean to and or just just you know not being able to just simply get uh myself and get my life together and just always feeling guilty about why I couldn't seem to, to just to, to pull everything together and to be able to understand that it did, does not have anything to do with me as a person that there you know that that the defect isn't in my personality or in my moral standards or, or whatever that is this is actually a medical problem that certainly eases uh, the guilt and it also fosters a greater understanding for this uh, disease and also a greater understanding of myself so that I have found that quite helpful and then um, another thing about ADHD although uh, ADD and ADHD sufferers do have issues with paying attention that's not what the total um, disease entails and it's not so much that the the person the sufferer doesn't want to pay attention and you know they're willfully doing it but this this affects the frontal lobes of the brain so um, and then it, it uh, this book brings out that what the frontal lobes do does is that it organizes information, it makes decisions, passes on information, stores information, and makes sure everything is working the way it should. Impairment in these executive functions can cause forgetfulness, an inclination to lose items, a tendency to interrupt others and even mood swings. Uh, at one time it was believed that uh, children with ADD and ADHD eventually uh, grow out of this. Uh, well, if it's a, a, a disease that affects your brain and it has biological components and all of this, obviously, uh, Ain't nobody gonna be growing out of too much of nothing. So, <laughs> and I pretty much came out of. The, I have to be honest. I came out of the toaster this way, been this way all of my life. I didn't grow out of nothing. <laughs> I was hoping maybe at some point I would just miraculously would be, you know, would have everything all together, and it it it, it didn't happen. <laughs> it just didn't. So, most people uh, that have this, that are diagnosed as children, the vast majority will continue to have it as adults. So, um, like I said, I am thankful that I do have a diagnosis now. My only regret is that um, I wasn't able to get this diagnosis sooner. Uh, unfortunately, 
I um, have had to, to deal with uh, loss of jobs, loss of, of relationships, poor self-esteem and all of that uh, because I simply, simply could not figure out what was wrong with me. So moving on, uh, there is a section in here that talks about medication. And I have to admit, for my ADD, ADHD, I currently am, am not on anything yet. And that is pending a sleep study I was supposed to have had done last year. But my insurance wouldn't cover it. And they wanted $1,500 to do, to, 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 I was going to pay people $1,500 to watch me sleep. That's up to a machine. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> the sleep study people said, oh, well, if, if you can't afford to pay the 1500 we'll make arrangements for you. And I said, oh, I, I said I could make, I said I could break down the payments. They said, sure. And I said, oh, well, that's wonderful. And they said, you pay half before the procedure and you pay half after it's done. So, I had to wait for a new insurance year because basically what happened was I was at the end of my coverage year and I had used up my money or whatever they have for the insurance, getting, you know, diagnosis and, and running back and forth to therapists and every doggone place. I was trying to figure out what the heck was wrong. So it was like, okay, we found I was wrong. The ther the psychiatrist wanted me to do a sleep study before she prescribed me anything for the um, ADD. I mean, for the ADHD, I can't get the sleep study done. So, okay. So, uh, so soon I will be getting a sleep study. Done. I got coverage that kicked in this month, so I will be making arrangements to get that taken care of, get my sleep study done, so I can get on the, the rest of my meds. What I have been doing in the interim for the ADHD uh, it is taking supplements. And uh, let me take check my time here. I got two minutes left on that. So on this, so um, I'm going to stop part two here, and then I'm going to pick up with the medications that are available uh, as of this printing of this book for uh, ADD and ADHD. I will be back.